All right, here we go with chapter 9. In chapter 9, focuses on one example of metabolism. And uh, chapter 9 is pretty challenging. Um, there's a lot of stuff in it and a lot of stuff we don't need to learn. So and on these mini lectures, I'm just following through the textbook uh, in order to help simplify and uh, prioritize the textbook in chapter 9. So a little different than how I'm doing with some of the other chapters. And uh, the focus is one uh, step, uh, one example in metabolism. It is breaking down oxidizing glucose, sugar, to carbon dioxide. And so oxidizing the carbon-hydrogen bonds in sugar to carbon-oxygen bonds in carbon dioxide. And uh, so the glucose is going to be losing, uh, the carbon is going to be losing the electrons a little bit, so they're shifting more toward the covalent bonding partner. And um, in this process, this is an example of catabolism, and amazingly and significantly, this is a good example because it's done in every eukaryotic cell on Earth. So all every plant cell, every animal cell, every fungal cell, every single-celled eukaryote on Earth does this, and every cell in your body, every cell in you. It requires oxygen, and this is the main reason that you are sucking in oxygen in your lungs. And this is the main reason you're blowing out carbon dioxide. The carbon in carbon dioxide comes from the foods we eat like that. You're exhaling this vapor of carbon, and uh, it was once solid food that you ate. And so, so the respiration is a good name for it, and this is another reason why it's a great uh, metabolic pathway to learn. And uh, it requires oxygen. And uh, there are three parts, and our book goes through these three parts. There are three parts in cellular respiration, glycolysis, the citric acid cycle, which is also called the Krebs cycle for its uh, major discoverer, and oxidative phosphorylation. <coughs> and this is what it looks like as a first view of it. Oh, oh, we lost our pen. This is what it looks like in our first view of it. We have glycolysis, we have the citric acid cycle, we have oxidative phosphorylation. Uh, these first two are where the, the sugar is actually chemically broken down and carbon dioxide is released here and here. And oxidative phosphorylation is really an energy converting uh, process where some energy is captured here and it's converted um, to ATP here. This is where the oxygen is required in the overall cellular respiration pathway. What this slide from chapter 9 shows is that <clears throat> we have lots of other foods in our diets and they can feed into this pathway. So another reason why this is a great pathway is other uh, metabolism feel, uh, fits into this pathway. There are other things we can do, like famously we've already learned that we most of the time we don't burn down the amino acids we eat, we use them to synthesize proteins we want. So we've learned about that in our class. But sometimes you eat, often uh, Americans eat more protein than they need, and so some of the amino acids are actually broken down to release energy. There are other things that can be done with these as well, but this is a major one and so a good reason for us to look at this pathway. Then, uh, then another reason it's good is because amazingly it's the same chemical reaction as is occurring in a fire. So when we're focused on energetics, it's interesting to see that in a wood fire, you're releasing this all as heat. Or you can imagine building a steam engine and capturing some as work. In our body, in our body, what we're trying to do is capture as much of this energy release as possible to synthesize ATP. So cellular respiration is all about burning glucose down and capturing it to, to drive the endergonic chemical reaction of synthesizing ATP. And we'll see throughout our course, we've already seen it a couple of times, like when the macrophage is moving, we've seen that uh, it's... Um, it's contracting AT, active microfilaments with myosin back here. It's polymerizing active microfilaments out here. It's recycling um, vesicles and driving them along molecular motors and microtubules. And all of those reactions and more require ATP like that. Sometimes other energy sources are required, like GTP is required for the by the ribosome to synthesize proteins like that. GTP is required to coat um, vesicles. 
but ATP and GTP are uh, readily convertible. And so what we're trying to do is just capture ATP. So that's the goal of chapter nine is describe how we burn uh, glucose through many steps in uh, pathways of glycolysis and citric acid cycle, and then convert those to this ATP energy intermediate. And uh, we can't burn cellulose. So that another difference is that we can't burn cellulose because we can't clip this uh, covalent bond to release the glucose and, and use the glucose um, in our bodies. But other than that, it's the same chemis chemical reaction, different chemistry. Here's ATP, just to show you and give you an example of something you shouldn't memorize from chapter nine, and that is I don't think you need to memorize any of the chemical structures. What's emphasized here is just that, that there's a covalent bond here that uh, is formed, uh, and uh, prior to that, this is A, DP, adenosine diphosphate, we add another phosphate to make it ATP. And ATP is the goal of synthesizing this from burning glucose to carbon dioxide. <clears throat> and what this emphasizes it is in a cell, the amount of ATP plus ADP is fixed, and we're just recycling this. So when we say make ATP, we're not making it from scratch, we're making it from ADP. And then when we're hydrolyzing ATP for energy work, we're not breaking it all the way down. We're just breaking it in, uh, in that chemical reaction in order to drive things like contraction of muscles and synthesis of proteins and things like that. Okay, so here's a great first summary image from chapter nine. And that just shows that the three steps occur in a physical location. ATP is the goal and there's some different parts of it that we'll talk about uh, on the pathway. Uh, glycolysis is several steps, several, several chemical reactions uh, that occur in the cytoplasm. And then the, the smaller molecule is transported into the mitochondria. The lumen of the mitochondria is called the mitochondrial matrix. And the several enzymes in the citric acid cycle and the substrates and products are floating in the mitochondrial matrix, citric acid cycle. And then oxidative phosphorylation is the conversion of, there's some ATP made, but in glycolysis and the citric acid cycle, there's also some NADH or NADH plus FH2 that made. See those feed in and oxidative phosphorylation is a process of converting those energy intermediates to ATP. So our total output from cellular respiration is ATP. And oxidative phosphorylation occurs in the inner membrane of the mitochondria. You can see over here, the mitochondria, we learned about some in chapter six, and we learned about it more here. What's it do? And uh, it's a site of citric acid cycle and oxidative phosphorylation. And it has two membranes. So here's an outer membrane that's a phospholipid bilayer, like we've learned about. And then there's an inner membrane. And uh, there's a reason why there are two membranes we'll learn about in the third part, oxidative phosphorylation. The components of oxidative phosphorylation are in the inner membrane. So they're somewhat hydrophobic and floating in the inner membrane. The inner membrane is folded to maximize the surface area uh, to allow for lots of the components of oxidative phosphorylation. So that's a good view of that. And uh, then here's the summary of glycolysis. And uh, this is what we want to get out of it. And uh, oops, I lost my pen function. And uh, shoot. Okay, well, I'm going to, oops, just got a couple more slides here to show. So there are actually several chemical reactions. So several uh, enzymes, or a small number of enzymes that are required. But here's the summary of glycolysis that we could learn. And that is we start with glucose. And glucose is a six carbon sugar. And we basically split it in two by glycolysis lysis cutting of uh, sugar, and we get uh, two three carbon sugars out of the deal, uh, and that's pyruvate. And in addition to pyruvate, we're going to give them ATP, and that's an energy source, a goal of the cellular respiration. And we're also going to get some NADH. We get two uh, because we split the molecule, and uh, the um, and this NADH is going to go on to be converted to ATP in oxidative phosphorylation. So it's good to know that basic summary. And uh, this is just to show you that NADH. So here's NADH up here, and uh, synthesizing it from NAD plus is a 
uh, uh, oxy, uh, redox reaction, and we're going to reduce uh, NAD+. In this case, we're actually going to add electrons to it, so we're going to uh, re, uh, we're going to uh, increase the number of electrons bound to NAD+ plus, uh, to make NADH. Uh, it's a, a highly anorganic reaction. We're going to need a ton of energy because when we break, when we eventually oxidize, oops, oxidize NADH, that's going to be enough energy and um, oxidative phosphorylation to produce three ATP. So it must be a tremendous up up uphill uh, energy step. Then uh, this slide also just to note that uh, like ATP and ADP, the amount of NADH and NAD plus in the cell is uh, constant, and it's just a recycling process. So we're just going to recycle and uh, use these over and again. Uh, some people say that NADH and ATP are like money. They're energy intermediates, like money is an energy intermediate, where you can go to work and do some actual physical work at Hannaford. Hannaford will give you some money that represents that work effort, and then you can go and you could have a car mechanic fix your car and pay them money to do that work. So see, we have work here, work here, and they're indirectly connected by the money. And that's what's really going on with ATP and NADH, especially ATP, where we gather energy from catabolism, and we use that ATP energy to drive anabolism. So we talked about that that uh, we could use the energy we uh, from the calorie eat to synthesize molecules. Uh, we could also use it to do work like that. And so that's what these energy intermediates are like. And the last thing to mention is that uh, on the way to the second step in the, that occurs in the mitochondrial matrix, the citric acid cycle, on the way to the second step, we're going to get the pyruvate into the mitochondria, and that occurs by this just a couple step pathway, and that's worth noting because more energy is released here, and also um, the uh, this, or this is uh, where energy is released, and also this is where our first carbon dioxide is released. So we go from this three carbon sugar to just this three carbon molecule that's bound to this large uh, coenzyme A and, and, and heading into this Krebs cycle. And uh, so we can start the mini lecture inside the mitochondrial matrix with this citric acid cycle.